Good morning. I'd like to welcome all the citizens of Pitt County to our meeting this morning. Uh, we'll ha first have our call to order, and then I would like for us to participate in the roll call, if you will. Okay, we would now like to have our invocation and pledge. Mr. James will do the pledge, and Mr. McGonhorn will do the invocation. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we come to, first of all, to give you thanks. We thank you to God for this day, and we thank you, Scott, for the activities of our limbs. We ask that you bless this meeting, have it to be as you wish. We ask these blessings in thy holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll entertain a to motion move. to approve the agenda. Okay. You'll vote, please. Okay. And our next item are presentations. Uh, one is a resolution honoring Dark. Akins, and that's uh, Mr. Elliott. We can um, ask the board to approve the, the resolution. So make a motion that we approve it. Second. 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 Madam Chair, it might be appropriate for you to read that. Okay. I'll be glad to do it. Thank you. Mr. James. Get Beth. Mm, yes. Thank you. Um, we'll, we would like to invite anyone from the family who would like to come forward. <coughs> Any and all. You can have everybody come forward if you want. Stay right up that way. Good morning. Good morning. This is a resolution uh, honoring Darth Akins, and I'll read it. Whereas Darth D. Akins was born on July the 21st, 1961, in Elkhart, Indiana, and called to his eternal home on March the 4th, 2012, at the age of 50. And I'm just going to ask you, Virginia's Akins, right? Yes. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I thought I had it, but I've read it more than I've said it. So, Whereas Mr. Akins was a resident of Pitt County, North Carolina, he received his baccalaureate degree with Western Michigan University and completed graduate work at Michigan State University. He attained his Juris Doctorate from Detroit College of Law at Wayne State University. Whereas Mr. Akins relocated to Greenville, North Carolina to work as a Pitt County Assistant District Attorney in 1997. Whereas during his 15 years in the District Attorney's Office, Mr. Akins was known as a tough prosecutor who was well respected for his integrity, honesty, intellect, and work ethic. He was dedicated to serving and helping others as shown by his strong relationships with many with whom he came in contact, colleagues, friends, and clients. Whereas Mr. Akins was a member of the North Carolina Bar Association, the 3A Judicial District Bar, the Richard Powell Legal Society, and the Phi Delta Psi Fraternity NC. Whereas Mr. Akins coached community league basketball and served as a mentor for several young people in Pitt County. Now therefore it be resolved that the Pitt County Board of Commissioners does hereby honor Darth D. Akins and offers his condolences to his remaining family and friends, adopted this day, the 2nd of April, 2012. Virginia, you want to say anything? No. 
<laughs> Just thank you very much. Uh, this is a very much appreciated. Uh, Darth really did call this home. So yes, thank he you. did. Thank you. Okay, and the next presentation we have is an overview and an update regarding the 2012 property reevaluation. And we have Kathy Booker and Harding Sugg from the uh, tax office. Good morning. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to give you uh, a reval update. Um, just to let you know, we have. Um, a group of fine appraisers that are certified. They're certified by the Department of Revenue and they work very hard for you in preparing a good quality, fair and equitable appraisal for the county. This morning, Hardy Sugg will be going through a PowerPoint presentation with you and then we'll answer any questions that you may have at the end. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name's Harding Sugg, and I'm the deputy tax assessor. And as Scott kind of calls me sometimes, I'm the reval man. I've been <laughs> kind of pigeonholed into doing these things for the, I believe this is my fifth one. Uh, we've got a short PowerPoint for you to look at. Can everybody see it? I'm not really technologically inclined here. But, uh, <laughs> uh, revaluation 2012 update. Revaluation is a process by which all property values within a taxing jurisdiction are revalued to their market value as of a specific effective date. Obviously, our effective date is January 1 of 2012. Pitt County has approximately 73,500 active parcels. Why is revaluation necessary? Revaluation is conducted to ensure all properties are appraised or assessed equitably because over time, some properties increase or decrease in value in comparison to others in the county. How are market values determined? The Pitt County Tax Administration uses various tools to arrive at market value, including, but not limited to, comparable property sales files, sales questionnaires. Some of y'all might have received those. We try to send out to, to most all sales. Multiple listing service, revenue stamps, cost books, ratio studies, which, conducted, which we conduct ourselves, but also for the North Carolina Department of Revenue. Sales to assess value ratios. We put this slide in there to show you what's happening in the last two revaluations. In 2004, when we do our sales ratio study, we were at 98.88%. And you can see what happens to the tax value versus the marketplace over the, the preceding three years. We went 96, 92, 88. Then going to the next revaluation in 2008, which is what we're charged with doing by the Department of Revenue, is to assess at 100% of market value. We again reassessed in 2008. Our sales ratio comes back up to 99%. Then you can kind of see where it's flip-flopped and been wishy-washy over the last several years according to what's going on in the, in the economy. Our 2012 ratio came in at 99.9%. What if I disagree with the new assessed value? Any property owner has the right to appeal their assessment. Instructions for appeal are included with your assessment notice. You all probably got yours. You realize we put an informal appeal form on that so you could fill it out and send it back to us if you disagreed with the value. There are three levels of appeal in the state. Informal hearings, which is what we conduct in our office, in the tax assessor's office. Pitt County Board of Equalization and Review, and the North Carolina Department of Revenue's Property Tax Commission. Actually, there's really four. If they don't get along with the Property Tax Commission, they can appeal to the court system. Informal hearings. <clears throat> the first level of appeal is through the informal hearings that start with the meeting of the tax appraiser and the property owner to review information to assure the assessment is at 100% of fair market value. North Carolina statutes place the burden of proof on the property owner to show the assessment is incorrect. 
The informal review process could take several months to complete. We're still doing that now, and we're not through. So far in the informal hearings in 2008 revaluation, there were approximately 3,000 informal appeals to our office. In the 2012 revaluation now, we mailed the notices February 23rd. We've had approximately 2,300 phone calls or inquiries to our office. We've got 1,450 appeals docketed on, on informal appeals filed, and we are reviewing those. As you can see, we're at about half the number of appeals that we had in the last revaluation, <coughs> but we've still got a ways to go in this process. The Board of Equalization and Review. The second level of appeal is with the Pitt County Board of Equalization and Review. The Pitt County established the current structure of this Board of Equalization and Review in September of 2003. The, bo the Board has five members, two alternates serving staggered terms. This Board, this is their third revaluation that they'll be doing. Um, the current Board is made up of members with the following attributes. We have one that is a licensed property appraiser who uh, is a general appraiser. We have an attorney uh, or an accountant or other professional. The attorney uh, is actually the chairman of the board, the past chairman. I'm, I don't know whether he'll be the chairman this year or not. Small business owner, uh, single family residential property owners, or an individual engaged in, engaged in the commercial production of agricultural, livestock, timber, or horticultural products. 2008 revaluation. We had less than 20 official appeals to the Board of Equalization and Review. We solved most of the appeals through the informal process, which is what it's there for. The 2012 revaluation, the Board of Equalization and Review convenes on April 30th, which will be the charge to the board date, and the first appeals will be scheduled for the May 9th meeting. The Property Tax Commission, the third level of appeal is to the North Carolina Property Tax Commission of Raleigh, a division of the North Carolina Department of Revenue. No appeals from the 04 or 08 revaluations were taken to the Property Tax Commission. I'll try to answer any questions. Okay. Anybody? I have a comment. Yes. Uh, can you give us a copy of your presentation? Certainly. I can, you want I to would, email it to you? Yes, that would be great. Okay. We'll send the Friday packet for the balance of the board. Okay. Too. There's some very important information there, and I think with the questions that we are getting, it would be good for us to have that and then we would all be on the same page. Some of this information is already on, on the website under the Tax Assessors uh, Administration's part of it and our 10 most asked questions, things like that. They're all general questions that usually come about with a revaluation. Okay. But I, I'll reiterate that because sometimes when we get the phone calls, we need something that we, you know, we'll keep Certainly. it there by the, Certainly. the phone. And so. if you get a phone call and it's a question on value, I mean, uh, oh, we do. We send it to we us. Send it, send it to Thank us. That's what much. we're there for. We have, you know, we have eight appraisers in our office at this time. It's a in-house reappraisal. Um, they're they're all local guys. They're familiar with the property. We did not hire an outside firm as has been done in the past uh, revaluations, several revaluations ago. We really hadn't hired anybody in quite a while. Okay, um, Mr. McLaughlin and then Mr. James. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you mentioned the court system as the final alternative in terms of uh, the appeal. What, what, what would that be? The district court, a, a superior court, or? Ooh, Mark, where does it go from there? Superior, I think. Superior court. Superior. Okay, I think that's important for, for, for the audience to know. And, and also, what percentage? It, it seems to be almost half of those uh, uh, tax evaluations has been call for some type of an appeal. Now, what percentage of the appeals thus far has been overturned from the local, from the first stage of appeal in terms of favorable, being favorable for the, uh, for the uh, homeowner? Hmm. I don't have that, that figure, Mr. McLaughlin. The, um, we, of the 1,450 appeals, we are in the process of looking at them. So it's a long way from being complete. There's, there's the majority of them we have not looked at. We, our, our normal procedure is when we get the appeal in, we in turn try to contact the appellant or, or the homeowner to say, we have your appeal, realizing this is a hectic time for us. We got a lot of conversation. We got a lot, we have a lot of phone calls. 
we can't, it's hard, you know, you can't very well answer the phone and talk to the public and then run out in the field and talk to a taxpayer about his individual appeal. So we have to kind of get through the first initial stage of everybody calling, everybody coming in, everybody sending the information. When we get that, then we in turn contact the, the homeowner and say, we have it, just give us some time, we will be back with you to look at your appeal. Now the percentages of them that, that are for or against, I don't really have that figure. Okay, thank you. Hey, Mr. James. Uh, I think what you've given us is very important. I think we need to go and put it on the government channel, Greenville and Pitt County. It's very educational. I think we should use the newspapers to let people know the process that we are going through to make sure that everybody gets a fair and just uh, evaluation. Because you know what I know. I've been here and... At the beginning, it cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars to do each, this each year. We even had to save the money in advance so we would have the money to pay for this reevaluation. Exactly. Exactly. It was very difficult. And I think we're having less. I know the first reevaluation we had, we had to have the courthouse, use the courthouse to have the meetings in. <laughs> so it has gone through a lot, and we've made a lot of progress, although we need to make more. The one thing that you didn't say, uh, you know, there are always these people telling me the buck stops with you, Mr. James. You're a county commissioner and setting tax rates and so on and so on. This does not come before the board of commissioners at all. In a, uh, no, sir. That wasn't mentioned. Back in 2003 uh, when you uh, appointed uh, or passed a resolution for the new board of equalization, for a board of, uh, independent board of equalization and review, and, you know, I, I don't know if, if all of you are familiar with who is on that board. Um, we currently have a, a licensed real estate appraiser, general appraiser, Andy Piner with Moore & Associates. Andy is a good fella and, and obviously knows, uh, oh, yeah. knows real estate. Ed Cogleton from the Stokes area is a small business owner out there. Uh, Jeremy King, who is a real estate attorney. Mr. Owens, you probably know Mr. King. Mr. King does a great job of keeping us in line and following statutes and laws of North Carolina. Uh, Joe Chambly, who is an alternate with the, and lives in Winterville. John Shepard, who is an alternate also, who lives in Farmville. Uh, Paul Davenport uh, lives in the Pactolis area. And Robert Halstead, who is uh, a, a farmer in the Chicago area out there, Stokestown area. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a good board. It's a, it's a thoughtful board. It does its best to follow the laws and the rules set out by the state governing us on what we do. Um, I think well, they made a, a lot of headway. Yeah, I, I think we need to communicate with the public. Let them know how we're doing it. And, and I think we're doing it a good way. I do. I, it, but uh, we make mistakes, of course. And what we are here for is to make sure we correct those mistakes Certainly. and we keep the citizens of Pitt County. But I think, like Mr. Manager, Madam Chairman, we need to put in the newsletter, use the newspapers, television. You know, we people now really look at, our, at the government channels. And they can be educated, and you take these people that live in Greenville, they're paying, or any town, they're paying two taxes. Of course, we're in the rural area, we're paying four now because we got fire tax and rescue, plus, I want our manager to remember that too, it's not six, six and a half, but it's about 75 cents on the dollar, which is a lot of money. And uh, we want to treat all of our citizens as equally as we possibly can, Certainly, and, we, and we need to inform them. So I appreciate what you did today here. I think even I didn't realize. I mean, I, you know, I'm familiar with it. I've talked to you enough, but but uh, it, it's a good way to communicate with our people and let them know. Certainly. And that's the the board is, is for that. Certainly, we try to treat everybody fairly and justly, yes, but we I still are charged with following what the market, what the sales are, what the values are telling us. And you know, if we, it, that's what the Board of Equalization is, is indexed after the informal appeal, appeals. If we just agree to disagree on one with the taxpayer, then their next route is to take it to the independent board and let them decide. Yeah, that's... Okay. Mr. Owens? Harden, you, you have done this previously in other places. It's been reported in the paper, but as an overture of what Mr. James and some others were saying for the taxpayers to know, how, how does your appraisal board distinguish between old construction and new construction? Old construction and new, obviously there's depreciation. Uh, when, when, you, when our appraiser goes out and measures a new house, 
uh, or whatever, then we apply it to the schedule of values which was adopted by this board. Uh, when we look at uh, over the years, of course, there's depreciation applied to that. The system itself, the tax camera system itself is a cost uh, system. We apply, we apply it in the cost and then we take that, that value and then go look at the marketplace and, and decide what is the marketplace telling us these values are. Then we have to make that adjustment to go what the market is telling us. There's three approaches to value, obviously. There's a cost approach, there's a sales comparison approach, and there's an income approach for income producing properties. Thanks, sir. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much. I, I feel like, like Mr. James said, we have a good process in place now, and I think it really works more for the citizens maybe than back when. I really do feel uh, very strongly about that. So, exactly. And thank you for coming once again because I know we've put this information out there uh, prior to the reavow and there's a pretty good explanation also in the letter that goes out um, as far as the process is concerned but I don't think our citizens can hear it too much so thank you for doing this this morning and we'll see that it gets done Mr. Yeah. James on our government channels and um, you know again and make sure that's out there Ma Madam Chairman yes, another sir. thing you know I'm on the senior advisory board here in Pitt County and we got a lot of senior citizens and they don't a lot of them and a lot of people in Pitt County don't look at the government channels and we need to notify these people some kind of way as to how they can get the discounts pertaining to their property and so forth because a lot of them now on fixed income and their houses are not uh, they can get a certain percentage of it all uh, what is it twenty thousand dollars how much is it twenty five thousand dollars off their taxes if they don't meet a certain income and a lot of these people do not meet that income and they don't realize that so it would really help them out and, and just to assure you, Mr. James, on the back of the revaluation notice that we did send out, there is a section here for the elderly and permanently disabled describing what you just said. Yeah, and I, I think we need to encourage them because they, they don't realize that. They, well, they're kind of like I am. I don't do too much with a computer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, <coughs> but uh, we still we need to be notified through communication, newspaper, yeah. newsletters, and so forth. And at this, at the senior center, we could. There's a lot of seniors out there, and they need to have newsletters out there and so forth to notify them. Okay. Thank okay. you, Mr. James. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Sir. Appreciate it. Um, okay, our next item are our employee service awards. Uh, Florida, if you'll come forward. <coughs> <clears throat> well, this morning again as we do quarterly we are about to recognize Pitt County employees and their tenure with Pitt County government and we're going to span the spectrum from five years to 30 years today in um, Five years, 10 years, 15, 20, and 30. So we call your name if you'll come forward. Um, as I always make brief remarks, just like to thank you for your tenure, your, your dedication to the citizens of Pitt County and this organization. And as I always say, this really, uh, I think, demonstrates the longevity and the, the long-term employees of the Pitt County government. So we'll start with the five-year categories. If we can hold the applause until the ending of each category, that would be um, appreciated. If John Caton from MIS would come forward. Congratulations, John. Thank you very much. Peggy Colfield, Social Services. Congratulations, Peggy. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Melinda Cox, Detention Center. Lynn Faircloth, Public Health. Lynn, thank you very much for what you do. Congratulations. 
Rose Newton, communications. Okay, not here this morning. Shalinda Prince, public health. Okay, I'm not here. Jeremiah Simmons, MIS. Michael Trongon, Detention Center, Sheriff's Office, MIS. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Michael. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amanda Turner, Detention Center. And our last five year recognition is to Linda Whitehurst, DSS. Okay. All right, moving along to 10 years. Brian Allen, Detention Center. And the next one's not attending, but we'd like to recognize Lena Baldry in the Tax Administration. Next, we have William Crowley, Sheriff's Office. Not here. Brenda Dancy, Social Services, DSS. Next, Karen R. Davis Jones, Social Services. Congratulations, Mr. Jones. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Jonas Hill, Planning. Bathsheba Smith, Detention Center. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And our last 10 years to Rhonda Topping, Sheriff's Office. With 15 years of service, we have Bonnie Lesko, Public Health. Congratulations, Bonnie. Thank you. Congratulations. Next, William T. McCarter, Jr., otherwise known as Troy McCarter. <laughs> <laughs> MIS. All the time with my congratulations, Troy. Thank you very much for what you do. Dr. John Morrow, Public Health. You don't get to watch it. Thank you so much for what you do, Dr. Morrow. I appreciate it. And our last 15 years, the Lachanchi Staten Sheriff's Office. Congratulations. Okay. In our 20 year category, we have three individuals today we're recognizing. And as we state at 20 years, the employees are given the option to select a watch. And we always joke to watch the next 10 years or, <laughs> or greater. First, we have um, Lemuel Capehart Jr., Detention Center. <coughs> Just stick with us 20 more. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Capehart. Thank you very much. I'm going to put that Congratulations. We next have my Minerva. Minerva. Minerva Freeman, Public Health.
I would guess that this watch has some bling on it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And Sam Tyson, Communications 911. Congratulations. Thank you, Sam. And we have one lucky individual who has hit the 30-year mark, Jenny Boyd with Public Health. And we'll be even luckier if she stays away. Yes. Right? We want you to stay away. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Um, we do have a reception in the back um, if you'll enter through this door and everyone's invited and we would like our honorees to go first. So if you'll just step forward and everybody's invited. Thank you very much. Welcome back after our short uh, reception and employee service awards. Um, our next item is public address to the board, and um, Mr. Manager, I think we have one person. Yes, Madam Chairman, we have Tamika Simmons. If she'll come forward and restate her name and address, please. Good morning to all. My name is Tamika Simmons, and I reside in uh, Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina, 720 Marshall Street. and. Uh, the office, Federal Financial Group, I'm a financial service professional with the Federal Financial Group, and the office there is located at 5540 Centerview Drive, Raleigh, North Carolina. I thank you all for having me this morning, and I especially extend a special thanks to Commissioner McLawhorn for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. Um, Ms. Simmons, I don't want to interrupt you, but at public address, we have three minutes, and if you have to go over to just finish up just a minute or over that. I just want, I, I knew you were new to us, so I just thought I'd let you know. I'll be very mouthful of that time for That's fine. <laughs> yes, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to um, give a special thanks once again to you all, especially um, Commissioner McLawhorn, for allowing me to speak today. I'm new to the area. I will be working here and helping the citizens and residents and county employees of Greenville and Pitt County in a very effective way. We use insurance products to maximize your future savings, okay? And we have very innovative new ways for that uh, to help you accomplish your goals and dreams. Um, and today's um, economic environment is very crucial to everyone to use very safe and great methods to ensure that our children, grandchildren, and um, everyone use these methods to make sure we have a great savings bucket in the future, okay? If you are um, in need or have any um, concerns about your future, you may contact me at 252-673-1085. And once again, thank you very, very much for having me today. Thank you. Thank you for coming, um, Ms. Simmons. Appreciate that. Okay, our um, items for report. Um, Mr. Manager. One more discussion, public discussion point. Please. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't call for anyone who hadn't signed up, but that's fine. Come forward. Oh, okay. Uh, you've seen me before. My name's Mike Leach. I reside at 103 Briarwood, and I'm in complete agreement that awareness, education of the revaluation process is essential. Uh, you know I've addressed this group twice. On March 26, Scott Elliott correctly advised everybody I was not satisfied with my decrease after the informal process. Uh, the rest of the story is my home or increased 32 percent or $52,000 and the decrease after the informal appeal was four tenths of one percent or $892. Uh, basically, my home was valued at $164,000 in 2011. The comparables included a couple of homes in Brook Valley and Lindale, and basically they had an average value of $226,000 versus my $164,000. Uh, now after the reevaluation, my home 
is worth approximately $5,000 more than theirs that used to be worth $64,000 more. I keep repeating, there's something the matter in, something flawed in the programs, algorithms that are used for the 2012 evaluation process. Um, as of January 1st, I live in a $175,000 home. I tried to refinance with Wells Fargo, who's in agreement, wants to loan me money because that's their business, but they can't justify anything above $175,000. So basically, you're absolutely right. I am dissatisfied with the incorrect assessment. It doesn't seem accurate or right. But I'm just one of the many reevaluation issues. And I will keep to the three minutes, but I had an old boss of mine that used to say, if you can't convince them with facts and logic, try some truisms or analogies, and maybe a little humor. So I'm going to turn around and say, I believe sleeping pills and laxatives are both great medications, as long as you don't take them at the same time. Wasn't all that funny. <laughs> Absence makes the heart grow fonder. I know you'll be fonder of me when I stop showing up for these meetings. I think everybody will agree on that, and my boss will probably be happier too. There's a direct correlation between staff and management. Staff, when they do an evaluation, are reflective of everybody else's opinions too. And I had the opportunity of walking through the tax offices with Mr. Brown on the way back to the conference room. And I did a sort of not a legal figurative smell test, uh, but I did my own. And I didn't smell any marijuana. I don't think anybody's high or whatever. I think they've just got a problem recognizing that in 2012, seven or 30 percent of the property values, that's 21,000 properties, didn't magically increase in value. Nobody can sell properties for the old values. Granted, there may have been some additions or modifications, but it's just not logical for those increases. So although I've had an open invitation to come visit me and walk the neighborhood, um, I figured I'd announce a special day Next Saturday at noon, I'll gladly host any of y'all that want to come out, including the tax department, and walk around the neighborhood. And within an hour, I think you can see what I'm talking about. It's just not logical, folks. Mr. So, Leach, if you'll wrap it up, please. My three minutes are up. Yes, I thank you very much for listening. And after 40 years of marriage and 40 years in sales, I've faced a lot of rejection. And it doesn't get me down. Thanks again. Thank you again, Mr. Leach. Um, okay, our next, um, and thanks for the jokes. <laughs> the um, manager's report, Mr. Elliott. Yes, Madam Chairman, board members. Um, <laughs> item A, next meeting dates, April 16th will be your um, next April meeting, and then May 7th at 9 a.m. Um, item B, just want to remind the board of the NCAC, which is the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners District meeting. Later this month on April 26, 530, we do have a van leaving from the county office building if you'd like to carpool with us to Martin County, or you can meet us there either either way. April 30th, um, the Shepherd Memorial Library Legislative Breakfast will be at 8 a.m. Um, item D, we'll let the board know as our last component, unit component of our radio system upgrade, the paging um, system RFP was sent out. I think it was actually our third RFP. We rejected the first two because two they were not compliant. We do have a compliant, um, there are actually three proposals that were submitted with this paging RFP. Motorola, um, according to our consultant, Federal Engineering, is saying that they are compliant and they're recommending that the county be authorized to fur negotiate further with Motorola to bring back first to the radio committee that you appointed to review the um, proposal as well as the negotiation, and then ultimately back to you as the Board of County Commissioners to approve that contract. So the board it would be in agreement by consensus or by vote to allowing staff to proceed in working with Motorola, who's being deemed the compliant bid on this project. That's the direction I'm, I'm seeking. Um, commissioners, how do you feel about this? Can we just have a consensus for them yeah. to move forward? Yes. Everybody in favor? Okay. We have a move forward. Okay. Item E, as the board is aware, this being April 2nd, we are now into National County Government Month. Um, years past, it used to be National County Government Week. It is now a month-long celebration. You see the list of events that we have going on in Pitt County 
to celebrate um, National County Government Month, and um, we welcome the board's participation at any and all of these events. And with that, Madam Chairman, that's all I have. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, uh, Melanie, if you'll come forward to tell us about our distinguished budget award. What we have this morning is just a good news item to let you know that the Government Finance Officers Association um, has awarded the county's fiscal 2011-12 budget document with the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Additionally, um, as you all know, because Scott comes to you twice a year with performance measures and our performance, this year we did a brochure with the stoplights, um, our scorecard. We got a special recognition for our performance measurement um, project that we use here in the county. Um, again, it's, it's just a good news item. We just wanted to bring it forward and let you know um, this is one of the items that the rating agencies look for, is that you're willing to put your documents, whether it's your financial statements or your annual budget, up against um, some pretty stringent guidelines and standards to say that uh, this is what we do, this is how we do it, and that we um, are pretty transparent in uh, sharing our data with the public. And on behalf of all the commissioners and all the citizens of Pitt County, we are most grateful for the job that you and your team do. And it is the highest form of re recognition that a governmental budgeting uh, team can receive. Okay. And we really appreciate what you do. How many years? Ten. Have 15 years? That sounds like a celebration. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Appreciate you. it. Okay. Our next item are items for consent. Now, let me. Okay. If you'll vote, please. With their approval. Okay, and they pass. And items for discussion. Uh, the first one uh, is our um, for Scott and our clerk, uh, Ms. Hines, the general policy for appointment to boards and commissions and committees. This is this report is on behalf of a request that we made as commissioners for you to come forward. Yes, Madam Chairman, I'll open this up and then turn it to Ms. Hines to review the. Um, proposed amendments to the, the policy. The board on March 12th did appoint myself, the county attorney and Commissioner Webb to look at the current appointment policy that the board has that is um, a policy for appointment to boards, commissions, and committees. And after going through, I think, two different meetings and rounds of, of proposed amendments, and these were sent out to the board in your um, info, information packets, what you have before you is currently what is being recommended by the, um, the committee for amendments. And if Ms. Hines could run through the, the changes. Okay, the changes are highlighted in your agenda packet. The first one is on page 29. There was a statement added, if an applicant see seeks consideration for an appointment to the ABC Board, Industrial Development Commission, or the PCMH Board of Trustees, an application addendum, which is attachment two, shall also be submitted. On page 37 is the new addendum. So if applicants seek consideration for those boards listed, they will also fill out this addendum with their application when they submit it to us. <coughs> On page 30, the second change is prior to the board's <coughs> consideration of an applicant. Any individual commissioner may contact an applicant to discuss their continued interest and qualifications to serve on any board or committee. And then on page 31, um, we just added, unless otherwise specified in rule or law, that specific um, language was added to that following sentence. And those are the three changes that have been made. Okay. Um, Commissioner Webb, since she was a commissioner on that committee, do you have anything you'd like to add or you think uh, it's okay? 
Yeah. No, just what we talked about in the uh, in the committee meeting, in that if one of the commissioners does interview a candidate for a specific board, to please inform the other commissioners so we're not browbeating people with the same questions over and over, unless you, of course, have some specific concerns. But if you're not going to deviate from the questionnaire, then just I, I would say that we do each other a courtesy and uh, either let Scott know so he can go out in the packet or email or, or just call us individually and let us know that way that the people who are intending to serve don't get run off by an inquisition. Okay, thank you. Any of the other two members have anything they'd like to add? Just wanted to add, uh, besides page 39, we did add a list of all the chairman's appointment list that's been with them in December, just for reference. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. James. I think this is good, but I don't think we've gone far enough. I think we will have overlapping of the, say if you if you meet with these appointees, you know, uh, say you meet with them, I, we ought to meet with them at the same time, give them an opportunity. Otherwise, you're going to have that overlapping <coughs> that you're talking about. Those three boards that were mentioned, ABC, trustees, and so forth, they are very important. To me, that's the ones that we've had problems with. The trustees haven't done what I think they ought to do for the citizens of Pitt County, such as millions of dollars have been spent, spent on changes of the names. How many of you questioned them? I know some of us did, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most I, I know we did. But if we had been together and make sure we talked to the trustees, how many of them questioned it? That's my, what I'm concerned with. And I think we need to be involved and let, <clears throat> let those people know that are representing the citizens of Pitt County and they're representing this board that we expect them to do some of the things that this board thinks that's very important. I really do. I believe that very strongly. And, and I think if we don't get more involved in it, we're going to be left out in left field a lot more than what we have been. So it's up to us. We appoint them. They should listen to us once in a while. If they're not going to listen to us, I can tell you this. I'm for getting rid of them. We control it. We got 11 votes on that, haven't we? If we got enough gall to take in and use it. That's all I got to say. <clears throat> and I'm very Thanks. sincere about it. We ought to do something without Thanks. just saying, no, we'll meet with you, one of us. That ain't worth two cents. Um, Let everybody meet with you, too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. James. The, Madam Chairman. Um, this okay. Is, okay. I was just going to ask, and, you, and if you don't mind, you could do this in the process, is include the um, questions that the applicants will have to, you know, in your comments, or maybe the attorney can do that for us after you finish, Mr. Webb. It's on page 37, 37 of our... Look, I've got it, Madam Chairman. Thank you. And maybe if you will also, maybe if you want to speak to the the reason for including those boards, and it really wasn't for trouble we've had with them. It was other reasons. Well, it was for me, my not know, for I you. Know, so I know. Let's I'm, for just, ourselves, huh? I'm just <laughs> saying. The, I'm <laughs> talking about what the committee said. Well, these boards are our most high level of responsibility and when it comes especially financially and things of the interest of the county that's what they were selected specifically but these questions could really apply to any board and any commissioner has that uh, prerogative it, it, it can be their prerogative to question someone with these extra questions uh, and just to go over the questions real quick there are what interest you in serving on this board or committee Please state briefly your specific or unique qualifications to serve on this board and contributions you hope to make to the board slash committee you serve. What motivates you as a volunteer for this particular board or committee? What do you see as the most pressing issues this board or committee needs to address in the next two years? And it's very brief, but it'll get to the heart of the issue. And, and uh, Mr. James, you mentioned one of us, more than one could uh, meet with the person. It's just the mechanism was put in there so that at least one, if they had questions, could question them further. And like my previous comments, was just that if there are more than one commissioner looking to 
interview someone that I would prefer they did it at the same time That's because right. we don't want to run people off. Right. Okay. Uh, but we do also want to because we want to make sure we're getting the best of the brightest and be, getting an expertise on these boards. <coughs> did I cover everything, Madam? Yes, I think you did. And anything else you would like to add, Madam Attorney? Anything? Um, no, just to say that nothing in this policy would prevent ongoing communication and conversation with your appointees after they've been appointed to be sure they understand how you feel about a particular issue that they might be facing um, and, and to continue communication that way so that um, they understand. Um, but the one thing um, in identifying the boards, and I served on the committee as well, is that we wanted to um, not we wanted to reinforce that these boards were selected based on the extent of the financial impact in their dealings with the county um, but that all boards are important uh, we didn't want to discourage people from serving um, we know that there are certain boards um, that the county appoints to that it's hard to find people like the nursing home boards and we didn't want to make a process that was too difficult or that would discourage folks from serving and so um, and, and we also wanted to um, keep it informal enough so that there weren't um, concerns about impact on particular interview questions, so to speak, um, or anything like that. And so we hope that the, the policy accomplishes what you need by allowing that opportunity for further investigation before you make the appointment, um, and then encourage you to continue the contact thereafter. Okay. Thank you very much. I will just say one more thing. Okay, Mr. James, one more said. thing, and then Mr. Owens. All right. These boards, trustees, ABC board, you got no, there's hundreds out there that won't be on it. So the competition is great. On the nursing advisory board, there are none. We try to get them to go there to be on it. So there, you can't even compare these boards with one another. The, high, the airport authority. And I say Many that just to show why these were selected, because right. we don't think this process so, will impact your So ability. there is a difference in your boards. Yes. And it's a difference in responsibilities. Yes. And those responsibilities affect the citizens of Pitt County more than anything else. So let's don't say that it doesn't. And since we got a lot of competition for these positions, then we ought to be more particular as to who we put on that. And they're not put on that to serve certain individuals. But they put on that to serve all of Pitt County. Ms. Owens? I think that the policy in itself states to what we said we wanted, and I appreciate the group bringing it back to us. But as an individual member of this board, for the years that I've served on this board, my philosophy has been that every area of the county has representation on various and different boards, and we have done that to a certain extent. I don't recall ever voting no on any person that a member of this board recommended except one, and Melvin knows who that was. But uh, we've got the concept, the people that I've talked to and that I've recommended, I've talked to them. I've had each of you, you had people you wanted to recommend, you talked to me. So this policy does exactly what we've been doing, folks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I agree with the comments that uh, Commissioner Owens just made. Uh, I know that I've been calling people before I actually presented them to this board to serve on, on a particular board. And as far as issues we may have with a particular board, you know, we experienced that last year and we took action and got results. And I think we need to be more aggressive in that whenever we have a concern about a particular board. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this policy. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Okay, if we'll vote, please. And I, I would like to add that <coughs> a few years ago when we added commissioner comments to the board agenda, it was specifically for the board members who serve as liaisons on boards to bring good news or concerns to us at that time. And we've kind of deviated from that a little bit. But I think all of us have felt very free to bring concerns. And uh, as Mr. Gary said, we have acted on some of those concerns. And I want to thank all of the board members who serve as liaisons on all of the boards. I'm not sure that the public realizes that all of us are in one, two, three, four boards that we meet other than this as liaisons. Thank you very much. Um, Kiara Jones, if you'll come forward. Um, the next item we have is the 
selection and the adoption of our new flag design that we have gotten. Thank you. Good morning. I do have a couple of things for you. The first one being the flag redesign contest. Uh, we launched the contest uh, beginning, I think, in February, and it ended on March 12th. We got over 80 entries, which I thought was a fantastic um, turnout, and uh, we uh, – the National, um, I'm sorry, the Office of Public Information, we kind of utilize a panel of judges to um, pare down the over 80 entries to three. And you'll um, see the page being passed around. Um, those judges, just so you know, consisted of uh, Cynthia Bickley Green, she's the associate professor at ECU, um, Jenkins Fine Arts Center, um, Holly Garriott, she's the executive director of Pitt County Arts Council at Emerge, um, Heather Mayo from the uh, Pitt County School, she's a public information officer, and myself, those were the judges. And um, we uh, pared it down to three. We sent it to you guys for you guys to rank. And as you can see on the page, um, your first, second, and third place winners. We're not going to announce those today because we're going to announce the winners at a later date. Um, and we're going to bring them before your April 16th Board of Commissioners meeting so you guys can um, present uh, the winners. Um, so we ask that today that you do uh, adopt your first place winner as the official Pitt County flag that will be used at official county events as well as flown in front of this building. Okay. So, Thank you so much for doing a yeoman's job of this, and I'm certainly thrilled at the number of people that uh, entered. Um, we'll take a motion. Madam Chairman, can I just make a comment? The, I'd just like to recognize the work of the, of the public, public information office on this project, and also just want you to be aware that the final tally before you recommendation is really a combination of the panel of judges that Kiara put together, as well as some input from you as board members um, collectively together. It's really kind of a combination of the two. Okay. Motion. Motion. motion that we uh, adopt the first place. Second. Okay. Um, let's vote, please. Thank you, Dave. And uh, the second uh, thing that I'm going to uh, talk to you about is the. Um, Last year I came before you um, after the North Carolina City and County Communicators Conference to let you know that the Office of Public Information I won two awards. Well, I'm back to say we won two more awards this year. Um, the uh, Our first place winner um, was the Mr. Danger Holiday Safety Campaign, which actually consists of um, Jack Cody, our EMS director, acting as Mr. Danger, talking to the um, citizens letting them know about you know holiday safety when you're going out shopping, making sure that all of your valuables are are safely um, put away in your cars and things like that. So they did uh, win first place. And second place is uh, for the external um, uh, newsletter that I produce for the statewide organization that I'm the secretary of. So I did want to let you guys know that. And those judges are from Colorado, Georgia, Texas, Virginia, um, California, and Florida. So these are some people outside the state who recognize um, the work that we were able to do. So I just wanted you guys to know about that. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, our next um, item are items for decision, and we have one. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, if you'll come forward, it's the Boyd Street Crossing in Winneville. Good morning, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board. We have one item for decision today, and it is the proposed closure of Boyd Street, and it's at the crossing of the CSX Railroad in Winterville. Um, many of you are already aware there has been a public meeting in the town of Winterville concerning the proposed closure. This was held back in early February. Uh, and just to orient you as to where this rail crossing is, um, this is Highway 11 here, the Winterville community. Uh, Four Lines Road and Boyd Street are basically one in the sun, the same, except they change names as it crosses NC 11, uh, heading southward towards um, Aden and Grifton. If you are heading past PCC, take a left onto Boyd Street, it will go straight across Mill Street onto the railroad crossing, which is right directly in front of W.H. Robinson Elementary School in Winterville. Um, this is an aerial photograph showing the segment. Again, Boyd Street pretty much dead ends right at the front door of W.H. Robinson Elementary School. This is an at-grade, unsignalized uh, rail crossing here, a Boyd uh, Street just before it goes over to Railroad Street is both on the east and west side of the railroad line. So again, this is would actually with the closure would um, actually take away the eastern intersection, which is directly in front of the school. 
Um, there are recommendations also from DOT. A lot of the improvements that are coming through would be part of DOT's um, closure process. And again, this is being initiated by the rail division from NCDOT to remove some of the unsafe and or redundant crossings throughout the uh, state. And the computer has frozen. Hold on. Okay, number one, three different proposals. These were in your um, package, and this is if they, uh, the state of North Carolina's Department of Transportation proceeds on with the closure. Uh, here, again, to orient you, a little different uh, orientation on the screen now. North is heading to the left side of the screen. W.H. Uh, Robinson Elementary School, uh, this is the first one where there'd be some raised islands here shown in green. Uh, this would also be the one-way street uh, all the way through this particular um, portion of the road. So it would turn Railroad Street on the east side of the railroad tracks to a one-way street. You can see some additional short-term loading and parking areas here to drop off students at drop-off and pick-up times. You can also see the removal of the railroad crossing here and some pedestrian improvements on this particular street just north of Boyd Street. Again, a few changes to this particular, um, this one, again, is a one-way portion without the raised islands, very similar. This particular alternative would show you uh, two-way in and out, similar to what's there now in front of the school, and uh, would retain that, but also remove the Boyd Street Railroad Crossing. As I mentioned, there has been one workshop already uh, the majority of the comments received at that point in time were in opposition. A lot of the residents in that uh, area of the town had concerns about the closure and access across the railroad track to the school. There are also issues that were noted when I talked with the Department of Transportation about some of the roads there in, in the town that actually flood, that are adjacent to Boyd Street, and they felt like Boyd Street was a better option in moving traffic through town during flooding events. <clears throat> At the same time, Winterville Town Council has also requested the, that the Boyd Street uh, crossing remain open. They had heard the concerns of the people in the town and wanted to maintain the uh, crossing. So today, um, even though DOT has had this public meeting probably two months ago, they are still soliciting comments from indivi individuals as well as uh, local government entities. And uh, today before you is your consideration of providing those comments. I will say we've also had an opportunity to talk with the Board of Education officials about this. They're pretty much neutral about this. At the time of pickup and, and drop-offs at the school, they put cones up in front of this crossing and basically close it during those times, trying to, pre uh, trying to prevent any accidents, make it a safer environment. So uh, at this point, they're fairly neutral on this issue as far as some of the uh, items for improvements to the street and also for the closure of the uh, crossing. So with that, Madam Chairwoman, I welcome any comments you have. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Webb, Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, after we received this, I thought about it, and it really came to my mind as I sat staring at a big uh, giant thing of molten sulfur for 20 minutes while not moving, and, one, and Greenville wondering why the uh, DOT is not focused more on getting that out of there than it is of closing one section where it appears that the local people have already handled the situation as it goes to the schools by putting out their cones. Uh, I think the people of Winterville have decided what they want. I think. Uh, folks in DOT's efforts on closing 40 feet of a street is, um, I don't know, it seems like they have some extracurriculars going on. And at $4 a gallon, I'm not trying to make anyone drive any further than they already have to. So I, I'd be opposed to this. Okay. Mr. McLaughlin. Having to read the paper this morning and uh, 
and, 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 and reading the com comments from our Commissioner Garrett, it seemed to me, and then looking and hearing what you just presented, Mr. Rose, uh, I, I'm always a firm believer in the concerns of the citizens, especially the council of, of Winneville, uh, that oppose this. So, and then listening and then hearing the comments from uh, Mr. Garris again this morning, who, who did some extensive investigation, it seemed to me, uh, Commissioner Garris, that you did, I certainly would be opposed to this. Okay, thank you. Mr. Garris? I'm Chairman. Uh, as it has already been stated, the citizens of Winterville have spoken. They are not supportive of this. The town council voted unanimously at their February meeting not to support the closing, and uh, I think we need to support them. Therefore, I would make a motion that we send a letter to NCDOT uh, requesting that they not close this crossing, and that letter can be pretty consistent with the letter that the uh, town manager of Winnable wrote that is attached in our package, and I would like for us to write that letter. Second. I'll second it. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded. Um, if we'll, uh, any other discussion? Okay, let's, that's good. let's vote, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Uh, may I ask you, James? James, may I ask you a question? It doesn't pertain to this. I, I had somebody talk to me from a pertaining to the cable uh, television over there. Uh, are you getting any complaints much? They were asking me, time warranted, uh, that's what they were very much interested in. What about that? I really don't know much about that, Mr. James, uh, maybe the manager could speak to that. Mr. James, our um, public information office handles a lot of the inquiries about um, high-speed internet access, cable access. If you've got it, you can give me a name and address. We can do that maybe offline and research that. All right, I would give that to you. Virginia Riggs was elated, but I don't know what her address is. The one that spoke to me was from Gardnersville. Okay. So. Well, this was from me. It was right in the town. Mr. Of James, that, that's also part of what we're trying to address on, at the State Association with allowing us to enter into public-private partnerships with broadband companies to get Internet cable out into our rural areas. Yeah, well, this is right in the age she does. She's, she's a very nice person. And she's very much, and I think she is the government channel, one of the things that uh, she's having trouble with. And she wanted to know about the uh, time warranted. Okay. But I, I, I would appreciate it okay. if you listen to it, see what we can do. Okay. Excuse, Excuse me, Jeff. 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 We'll have our commissioner's comments and committee reports, which means you speaking as far as committees you serve on. Is that right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I saw some eyebrows go up. I wasn't really sure. Okay, uh, Mr. Owens? No, ma'am. Okay, Mr. James? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 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 thank you, Mr. Owens. None at this time. Okay, Mr. Smith? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Garris? Dr. No, no, Mr. Hammond? No, Mr. Well? No, I'll motion to adjourn. Second. All right, let's all <laughs> vote, please. That's that. Yes, That's sir. that. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Yep.